All right, it's 12 minutes after 7. You're welcome to my banner, the Great Accra region. Uh, uh, let me just start by telling you that in 2014, Ghana recorded over 15,000 cholera cases with over 150 deaths. That record is still on our heads. Uh, the Great Accra region recorded the highest number of cholera cases during the year 2014. Uh, and we've heard recently that a deputy local government and rural development minister, Emmanuel Jacum, says that cabinets is considering a bill to make it a crime to make the, the streets and other public place messy uh, by, you know, throwing garbage around. So very soon, when you dump that sachet water after drinking it, when you dump the rubber on the streets, you could be prosecuted. We are waiting for that action. The proposed bill will also make participation in the monthly national sanitation cleanup compulsory. So in our criminal law, it's an offense to throw rubbish in the streets, etc. The law in section uh, 296 says, whoever does any of the following acts shall be liable to a fine not exceeding 200,000. Uh, and you, you will find that in any town or places, some of the instances that they've given, or courses or permits to be placed, uh, filth, dirt, refuse, or rubbish, or any offense, or otherwise on wholesome matter on any street, yard, uh, enclosure, and so forth and so on. But we're not enforcing that. You and I know it. So if they say that very soon they would, uh, then that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? But we know that the rains are staring at us now. Uh, we recorded such a huge number last year. What are we recording now? How does it look like? More importantly, how can we prevent it? Uh, so my guest this morning is Dr. Dennis uh, Borte, and he's a senior medical officer at the Rich Hospital here in Accra. I want to say good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Mm. Okay, so let me just start by asking what it looks like now in terms of cholera and the cases that you are recording, for instance, at the Rich Hospital. Well, I may say that um, last year was um, one of the worst moments in, uh, in my history as, in, as, in, as long as I've practiced, about 10 years. The numbers that we saw of people dying from cholera, and I, I would say it was shameful, I mean, for us as a people. Um, the numbers were huge. Um, uh, OPDs were actually overwhelmed, mm. and we had to I mean, sometimes close down normal clinics and just take care of cholera for weeks and months on end. Um, gradually, the numbers have gone down drastically. Um, I must say that as we speak, once a while, um, somebody comes in with a diarrheal disease, um, some of which may not be confirmed cholera cases, but they may be just diarrheal diseases. Um, the numbers have come down so drastically. But every now and then, what we have noticed is that whenever the, there's a downpour. Mm -hmm. Just the day after, we see a flock of people coming with diarrhea disease. And okay. usually, um, with our history or with, our, with our, what we know so far, when, when the rains come in, cholera also, there's a, a surge, an upsurge in the case of cholera. Mm. So um, the picture that is painted is that just after rains, a day or two after, we have people coming in with um, severe diarrheal diseases. So that's the situation now. It's not, the numbers are not as huge as before. We record probably one or two a day or one or two within a week. Mm. Um, the numbers have gone down. Yeah, but, but even that shouldn't be normal. I mean, even that shouldn't be okay. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I'm, I'm, I keep saying that um, I'm hoping that um, what we experienced as a people last year, especially southern part of Ghana, um, we would have told ourselves that um, once bitten, twice shy. For us to say that never again. It is not just for, um, for us as medical doctors talking, but for the individuals who are out there, bankers, last year was everywhere, bankers, uh, lawyers, everywhere, everybody was having some form of diarrhea disease. If you are going to say that once bitten, twice shy, and therefore with the incoming of the area, we are expecting the rains to be falling or coming in, and, and, and more, more torrential rains are going to be coming. We should tell ourselves the ones be saying twice shy. We should take the necessary precautions so that we don't go back mm. to that kind of situation. Otherwise, we wouldn't have learned anything. And it will, be, it will be so bad if with all that we experienced last year, is we going to go through this year with the same numbers, mm. then we haven't learned anything at all. And that would be very shameful mm. if we should go back there. So w when you say uh, viral uh, disease, 
Diarrheal. Uh, diarrheal diarrheal disease. disease. Okay, what do you mean? Because I'm thinking viral okay. right now. Right. <laughs> and what I say, diarrheal disease, anything that, or a condition that a person is passing too many stools at a time, maybe mm -hmm. more than three stools in a day, and that is diarrheal. And it sometimes may be because, or maybe um, a stool that may be just watery, or sometimes may have mucus in it, or sometimes may even have blood in it. I must say that there are other bacterial causes that may um, result in a person having diarrhea, E. coli, can cause that um, other campylobacter, other bacteria can cause it. But when you have the, um, the preponderance, like you have very frequent numbers all of a sudden, mm -hmm. then that is um, because of, likely because of cholera um, bacteria, vibrio cholera, that spreads very, very fast mm -hmm. because you are always eating and we are always drinking. And that one spreads very, very fast. So, and especially in the rainy season, mm -hmm. it's worse. Mm -hmm. So is it from the foods that we eat or from going to the washroom and not cleaning your hands for instance because and i keep saying that once we're working once we leave home very early we don't have any options but to buy food from outside yes i would say it's both it's both and um, the food enters your 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 intestines either you touching it or even if you're using a spoon you touch the, take the food into your mouth mm. or if you're eating with your bare fingers is your hands that are going in. So you look at the food, you look at the water, and you can look at your hands. So it's important that um, when you leave home and you are out there eating, make sure that the food you are eating is very, very warm or very hot. It's just like practically off the fire, and then you, are, you take it in. Mm. Meanwhile, you must also ensure that your hands are thoroughly washed with soap and the running water. And um, if you go to our chop baths where they have water sitting in the bowl, and everybody washes their hand in the water, it is not safe enough. They should at least have what we call the Veronica buckets, and then there's a, a disposable container or a bucket down there where you open the tap, wash your hands with soap, mm. and the, 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 the water goes into another um, receptacle down there, which nobody else would touch with their hands. That is more important. And people also think that they would put lime in the, if the, 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 the other bucket is that they put lime in it and they think it's okay. Um, well, that may, but we are talking about washing your hands under soap, with, with soap under running water, mm. and make sure that your food is warm. And we also said that if possible, if you can even have your own water bottle, where um, you, you are very sure of your source of water, and also you are sure that the, the, if possible, you can only even warm your own water, boil your own water, and cool it back into your um, bottled bottle and then take it along mm -hmm. and drink it because um, what happened last year, I can tell you, I saw foreigners, white people coming with just oozing um, um, stools from their backside, just like that, walking and it's just on the ground. It was that bad. Bankers, lawyers, pastors, uh, so it was that bad. Sometimes we tend to drink the water that is termed pure water. Yeah. Is that not safe too? I wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee that. I mean, unless, of course, um, the, we, the standards board can tell me that all these sachet water on the market has really, really been tested to see how good um, they are. They are really pure, as, as pure as they, they claim to be. Mm. Um, recently, I was drinking one of the sachet water, and I didn't like the way it tasted. So I told somebody, no, this, don't buy this one. They said, no, it depends on where you are buying it from. I said, but it's the same sachet, like the same um, label. He said, no, when, later they bought the same thing and their taste was different. So he said, she asked the person, so oh, some of them, you see the same label, but it's fake. Other people are producing it. Wow. So um, uh, the standards board should be able to, or the, the food and drug Now board, it's stand standards authority. Standards we have authority. the food and drugs authority. Standards, standards authority. authority. Should be able to stamp out these people who are, these charlatans who are hiding in some rooms and then just putting anything um, out there. I mean, it's, more, it's safer if you have water that is really coming from the deep of the ground. Mm -hmm. Those ones that come from the deep springs of the ground, that, they, that water would have, you know what we call filtration? Mm -hmm. Like you, in science, you learn about filtration, water going through levels and levels and levels, and then pure water comes from below. Now, if you have water from the deep down, the, the earth, as, in, as far as the water table, it would have gone through a lot of filtration. Mm -hmm. Bacteria naturally. Be, naturally. Bacteria wouldn't be able to sink all the way down because of the conditions. So that water is purer than probably what people are hiding in their rooms and fetching, or, um, fetching water from wells or 
um, uh, fetching water from the taps and then adding a few chemicals to it just to take and put it on the market. And uh, you know there are bad people out there. Even medication, people mm -hmm. are faking medication, yeah. put them on the market. So it will be for our uh, standards board to be also watching out for these things. Last year, um, what we had, I had a strong suspicion that it must be linked to water. Mm. I had a very strong um, suspicion that it's probably from a, a water source somewhere, which I was saying that um, this thing needs to be investigated. Whether Is that because from, uh, be because from the class of people that you were seeing, you were not expecting certain people to get The it. reason why I, I, I'm saying that is, in the past, the people we saw having cholera was usually people from the slums. You know, from the places where there was a lot of congestion, you know, the um, Sodom and Gomorrah areas, the, where there are a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, naturally, their sense of hygiene wasn't the best. But I had friends of mine. I have a lot of friends in the media. Some came to the hospital and they were having it. I have friends in the banks. I have friends in the, med um, the, the network companies, telecos. They were all coming in. Some of them, they just couldn't believe it. That I, I can't believe that I'm going through this. Uh, people drive their bands and come to the hospital and come and lie on cholera benches. And every night go back to it. And they just couldn't believe they are lying on this, this bench with a hole and a bucket under them mm. and they're oozing. They walk about. And they are rich people. So then I was like, no, these are people you expect that at least they practice good hygiene. Mm -hmm. But then there were still people were still coming down with the cholera, foreigners, Lebanese. So I was like, maybe we should investigate that source of water as mm. well. Okay. Because but, but because we, we didn't do any, you know, like what kind of water do you drink? Any kind of small well, survey? We, yeah, we didn't do that kind of survey. But you know, if 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 bacteria are such that they can multiply quite quickly. So if you have fecal matter mm. in getting into the water and it's um, contaminated with cholera and bacteria, it just spreads in the water. And a little bit of that you take into your system. It goes and gets, it will fester in your system and then um, multiply. And then with that, within a short time, you also be having diarrhea. So a, a water source contaminating, contamination is more dangerous than even the food sources. Mm. You know, sometimes it's hard for people to believe when you say fecal matter in the water. I mean, people are thinking, why would anybody do that? <laughs> but you see, um, we, you, um, let's say you are working here. Somebody um, goes to the washroom and they clean themselves. Tea roll is what they use. Some of them are not strong enough. As he may or get his fingers contaminated mm. with fecal matter. After that, he may press the, um, the, or flush the toilet, leave some deposits on there. He may come out, use the tap to wash their hands, or some deposits to be left there. He comes, sit on the computer, the laptop. I mean, every other person this goes there. This is scary. <laughs> another person goes there to do what? Sit on the same computer to, to type. So a bit of that fecal matter is, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not something that is visible, kind of microscopic. Back then, you would have been contaminated mm. anyway. Your fingernails, I mean, we have flies flying all over the place. They go in, especially for those places that you have rubbish being dumped over there and it to be there for days on end and nobody goes to take the rubbish off. You have people throwing fecal matter onto the rubbish as well. And um, flies will be sitting on them, on those things. If there's any fecal matter that contains the virus, the, 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 the feet of the flies sit on that, mm. just go to the nearby place where somebody is selling food and the person may not be hygienic enough, we know we have um, covered the food well enough. A, a little bit is spread somewhere or the, the person who is um, selling the food in this area may go to a public toilet and you know how the public toilets are. I mean the walls, everything, people touch the walls. So the person has to support himself, get up and touch the walls, come back and sell something to you. Maybe the person didn't wash their hands well, get into the food, and, and there you go. Yeah. So the, the chain is, is such a, a, a cycle that for the only thing that you can do for yourself as an individual is to make sure that when you get the food from outside, if you can take it home or if you can take it somewhere that you can heat it again mm -hmm. or have a microwave to uh, warm it again, and make sure that your hands are also well washed. I remember last year when we were taking care of these patients, uh, I, we could scarcely, I could hardly eat. Because once you're working with them, I could hardly put anything in my mouth. Mm. So, and I, I'm not the pastry kind of person, but for once, I would just, when it's time for me to eat, I just drive to a shell opposite the hospital, and I go there and I take the, tell them to put the thing in the oven, <laughs> they heat it and I take it there, and then that's when I eat it very, very hot. Mm. Because we are, 
Every, any, can happen to anybody. anybody. Yeah, it's true. It can happen to anybody. I've been asking myself, uh, you know, the people who sell water and things in traffic, uh, uh, and those who sell the ice creams and the pastries that come with it. You know, sometimes you see them uh, just take it cool somewhere, and they, they try to arrange the products. That's right. And these are pastries. There's no microwave mm -hmm. anywhere. anywhere. These are bare hands that That's they're right. arranging with. And I ask myself, so when we buy things from these people in traffic, do we know where they've gone to rest, where you know they've gone to urinate, or exactly. you know do the pool and not wash their hands that and is, what they are carrying right exactly. here? Exactly, that's a very good point you have raised there because the sachet water and all this, they just take it like that and give it to you, and mm -hmm. you also just bite the tip off. Mm -hmm. Wherever they held, you don't know. I mean, you just take it, and wherever they've been to, also you don't know. So um, we're saying that in this time, we are getting to the rains again. <laughs> if possible, if take extreme precaution, extreme precaution. Because, I mean, these things that they are selling on the, by the roadside, um, they pick it and give it to you, pick it and give it to you. Unless, of course, maybe it seems like some like plantain cheese. That one, you know, that's sealed. Like, mm. you know, I saw that one, you may tell it. But things like oranges and all these things that you, I mean, people touch them and they just give it to you. And then you just put them in your mouth. There was something that, I, I, I was struggling to figure out last year. Uh, a couple of people drank cocoa. And you know, usually the Hauser cocoa that we buy mm. is hot. And if you, if you buy it and you're drinking it on the spot, it will be warm, definitely. I was wondering how people could get cholera through that. I'm surprised you, your source, Coco, with what, what the questions we asked, as I said, we didn't much ask about what type of water they were drinking, but most of the people who came, it was Wache. Mm. It was more of Wache. It was maybe Wache, I had the Wache, and then it was more of Wache that we are getting. But um, you're asking how Coco can, can lead to that. Um, it's difficult to say, but the most important thing is that the person comes, and at that time, we we're doing a lot of the, what we call the rapid diagnostic test, RDT. We do the stool test. Mm. So a lot of the cases were actually confirmed. So probably if you have 10 cases, about seven of them be confirmed as being vibrio cholera. Um, it, it can still happen with, with Hausa cocoa, whichever. I don't know whether, the, whether it's a bowl you put your cocoa in that wasn't clean enough, or you washed it with certain water that Or the person serving it. It's the person serving it. Okay. So um, even when it comes to you cleaning your bowls at home, um, if you can do them in warm water, just get the warm water and um, just put your bowls in and mm -hmm. wash them as well. I mean, you cannot be careful enough. As far as this cholera is concerned, you cannot be careful enough because, I mean, the kind of effect it has on you, the kind of... I remember last year this woman who was on TV, the, the two days before she was on, she's a teacher, and my friend, she was on TV educating people about the cholera, cholera. Two days later, she called me in the morning, doctor, I'm dying. Oh. I'm dying. And we had to rush her to the hospital, and she was, she was just almost gone. Her cheeks were, her mother is dead, her mother is dead. She didn't die. But she was like, what? I can't believe I was on TV educating, educating people. And two days later, I'm done with it. And she nearly died. So you can't be careful enough whoever you are. Mm. Whoever but you it are. starts at a certain point. It gets worse at a point. How do you quickly realize yeah. that it's not just a running stomach that I have? Because of the way it spreads. I mean, diarrheal diseases are, have always been there. Diarrheal diseases, diarrhea has always been there. Gastro, we call it gastroenteritis. Mm. They have always been there. Uh, occasionally, some people can go to um, a party and have food poisoning. Food poisoning comes with a form of abdominal pain and um, diarrhea, sometimes maybe mucoid in it. But usually, that of cholera is different because it's painless. You, may, you, you hardly mm. have any pain. You can't control the bowel. It's like you are there and it's just oozing just like coming. a pipe. But with gastroenteritis or food poisoning, you feel the pain, you feel the cramp, and then you may have time to rush to the place. But in the case of cholera, it is profuse, uncontrollable um, diarrhea, vomiting, and it just comes. Anybody standing by you, you can just feel it on just anybody. So we have to gown and wear things to protect ourselves, because anybody can just vomit on you. Mm. And the vomitus contains some of the bacteria. The fecal matter contains some of the bacteria. So we are, so we keep washing our hands every now and then. So that is the thing about cholera. It is uncontrollable, it's watery, is, is just profuse, and within a short time, you lose so much fluid from your body that your kidneys can shut down. And I'm going to acute kidney failure because the kidneys need fluid to hydrate, to get, I mean, hydrate your, your kidneys well so that they can filter. So essentially, it needs water. 
So if all the water in you is now being seeped out through fecal matter or through vomiting, then your, your blood pressure will be dropping mm. because your blood volume is shrinking, your blood pressure will be dropping. It means um, the blood will not flow to your kidneys as well as they should, and the kidneys can shut down, so you go into acute kidney failure, which we have to try and reverse. So that's the reason why most of the time, um, when it comes to cholera, we don't even concentrate on antibiotics. It's just replacing the fluids as quickly as possible to get your body um, uh, homeostasis getting back to normal so that your balances will be well. After that, we can look at the mm. antibiotics. The mm. essential thing is the fluids and fluids and fluids. It's, it's very terrible, and I pray that we really, really don't go back there this year. Something that we haven't probably paid a lot of attention to, and I want to do right now, uh, the doctors attending to these patients. Last year, it was, it was hectic for you doctors. How frustrating is it, you know, when you have cases like that, uh, when you have, when you are seeing things that you know could have been prevented? It is very frustrating and um, the pressure on the doctors is enormous because um, when we were running the cholera clinics last year, you hardly sat down. You stood on your feet from morning till evening because you move from one bed and before you, I mean you can have 30 beds and they get filled up and more are coming so then you resort to benches and you have to go from patient to patient if there's a bench you have to bend putting intravenous cannulations into the person you bend your back is because the benches are lower the beds are different so the pressure on the doctors was enormous sometimes you break down we we broke down but um it's, it's it was a time a period we were just hoping that um, it would subside or the, condition, the situation would subside soon. Um, last week I had my matron talking to the oddies around and we are going to have a cholera training. I said, Madam, are we expecting to say, well, we have to prepare because the rains are coming. Mm. And I'm, say, I'm just saying again that I'm hoping that we will not go through that stress again as, um, as, as doctors and health personnel, if only people will do the preventive thing. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's something that cannot be prevented, then we can understand. Mm. But if it's all about contact, um, contacting people, touching people and washing your hands, just a straight um, instruction. Before your hands goes into your mouth, make sure that it is thoroughly washed. Um, the, the issue of sanitizers came and all that, but yeah. we, 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 uh, we don't subscribe wholly to sanitizers. Fine, I mean, if you're in an environment where there's... I think also came with Ebola. Yeah, where there's no water at the time, you can manage with that. But uh, nobody should tell me that... Um, Sanitizer is the panacea to the problem. If, if, if sanitizer was a panacea, I, mean, I don't think Ebola would have got into the levels it got to in, the, in those parts of Africa where it did. So it's not mainly sanitizer. It's about doing the, avoiding certain contact and handshakes and all these things, making sure that your food you're eating is warm. Um, because nobody will tell me that um, you can wash your hands and take your food. You cannot tell me that you wash your hands with sanitizer and then eat. Some people do when, when they can't get water. But it's dangerous. But that's not safe. Yeah, it's not safe. I mean, have you tasted your? Have you have you tried to taste when after putting sanitizer, put it on your tongue and see how how the taste is? It's bitter. It's very. Yeah, and, isn't and it supposed to be? You know, that bitter thing that will kill the bacteria. <laughs> I'm just thinking. <laughs> well, that's that's your thinking, but it helps. It helps with, uh, to some extent. But um, there are the other types of sanitizers that we say are not uh, non-alcohol based. And the alcohol based ones are there, not alcohol based. But it's not everything in them that we say that are really, really safe. As for those that are not alcohol based, they contain certain substances that, with continuous use, may not be the best. Mm. And water is the safest of everything you can get. So just wash your hands with soap and water all the time. In the absence, I have sanitizer in my car, but I don't use it. Only when I think that uh, I need to use it. Mm. So we still would say that um, we don't want to go through the hectic times we went through last year. We are begging people. Let me just briefly right ask thing. about this uh, other angle to this issue where a, a, local, a deputy local government minister is saying that they're considering a certain bill that we essentially punish people. Would it help as a doctor? What do you think? It would help if only it can be enforced. Um, we have a situation where uh, laws are there, but they are, they are not enforced. Um, is the enforcement of these things, these bylaws that we... I mean, back then we used to have, is it town council? Or yeah, the town council that where a lot of us were referring to as uh, tankers. Tankers, yeah. <laughs> they used to come around and, yeah. I mean, to their houses and even check if, if there's, there are toilets in the house, if um, there are rubbish around. If this thing can be done, it can really help. 
if people are being arrested every now and then, um, and it be a deterrent at least for people to know. And if it happens on a rampant pace, then people know that if you do this, you can be arrested. And then I think people will just take it that seriously. In, I think the last time America recorded um, any case of cholera was 1911. And it's been over 100 years. There's not been any one case of cholera. But if you go there, you see how, I mean, their sanitation consciousness is. You hardly see anybody dropping anything anywhere. Um, you hardly see people like what we do here. We stand anywhere and then we just urinate. Just just, we, we. I was telling you, so you never see the white, uh, like, you go to Europe or anywhere. You never see anybody doing that. You should ensure that houses are being built. There are no toilets in the houses. So people, and you see, the thing about defecation is that it's a natural thing. When it's, 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 it's the one thing that can disgrace you anywhere. So yeah. when the pressure is there, the person will find somewhere to defecate. De de if there's nowhere, you just sit in his room and then put it in a, a black polythene bag. You just use him. Yes. And after that, you just go and drop it anywhere in, in, a, in a gutter. Yeah. And the rains come, they wash it. People go and drop these things on the farm. So they see somewhere, maybe on the, the rubbish bin, somebody throw it on it. And you see a rubbish cars, the cars that take this rubbish, they will be fly, driving and all these rubbish will be flying out and then on the streets. So we are exposing ourselves even into the uh, atmosphere with all these things that are not really healthy. So it's, it's supposed to be, uh, I think, uh, so what word should I use? A wholesome approach, a, 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 a holy approach. It so like all hands on all deck, hands on approach deck. it yeah. from all corners, yes, every angle. From, from every angle. Let's make sure that the sanitation in the city is apt. So that I mean, we can curb the recurrence of these things, and we should we shouldn't wait for the cholera to come for us before we start um, putting out the adverts there or the things. To, we to even start now, just inform people that um, the rains are coming. But then, as people, why should we even wait to be told that the rains are coming? Why should we wait to be told that uh, be careful, cholera is coming? I mean, we should have learned a lot of lessons over the years from these these things that happened. And um, um, May nine disaster was what 109 people. Mm -hmm. Cholera is the same, even more. Yeah, 150. 15, uh, 15. Okay, but that's... Yeah. I think that's more than the yeah. Yemen disaster. So y y you can imagine what cholera did. I mean, it was like a disaster. It lost so many lives, productive lives. I mean, they are... Do, do you guys, as in, when I say do you guys, I mean doctors. Do you feel guilty? I mean, do you feel... Are you to be blamed? Do you feel that you also have a certain responsibility? Do you feel that it was partly your fault too? No, no, no. I, I think, it's, I won't say so. And we have public health um, services. We have public health units and that um, are supposed to be I mean, educating the public about these health issues. Um, they're not necessarily doctors. They're public health workers. And back then we have information services department. They used to go around when I was a kid, they would come to your area, come and show things on screen about these issues. I mean, we can always go back there. We have areas where, I mean, knowledge about these things is very poor. Mm -hmm. You can still take these ones out there and educate the people even from now, that uh, around this time of the year this happens. For, at least for those who may not be aware or those who may be oblivious of these things, we should go there and then start educating them. Um, as a doctor, where probably I would feel uncomfortable is where I'm in the hospital, the patients, comes with, uh, the patients come with uh, these um, cholera issues and there's no space to take care of them. And sometimes, you know, when, when somebody is even treated and is fine, I mean, hydration has become normal, it doesn't mean that the person is free of the bacteria, the stool the person may shed may not contain the bacteria anymore. Okay, so in a normal state, the person should be in isolation for probably a week or two. If the condition were that good, probably would even have more space, keep the pe person there for two weeks before going home. But here's the case, there's a competition for space, right, in the hospitals, some are on benches, so maybe sometimes when you are after three, four days and you are okay, um, okay, the tools, it's not that he stopped, but now he pass only two times a day or three times a day, it's still watery. Okay, just go home and then continue, continue with the ORS and your zinc tablets and all that. But the person goes home, still shedding a bit of the bacteria, and, and what we also noticed was that people bring their brothers and sisters and bring them to the hospital. They get treated two, four, four days later. They also come back mm. with the same thing. So you see, you see the contact thing. So that's where probably I would have felt that, oh, I wish we could keep one person for two weeks and make sure that the person is really free of the bacteria totally before going home. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes the conditions are not that, um, they are not there everywhere. I mean, whatever, what happened in the country wasn't just in one hospital. All the hospitals had the same complaint of space to take care of these, these people. So that's where I feel a bit yeah. bad because as for um, the 
people coming in, it is ultimately a, an individual's own responsibility. Your health is your responsibility. Your health is your, is your, it should be your priority because your health is your wealth. If you have cholera for a week or two weeks and you're not, going to, you're not able to go to work, you cannot make any money to make ends meet. Sure. So it's important that you take your health as your World Cup. Are you ready for any, I mean, because we're trying to prevent it, but if it happens, are you ready for it? <laughs> what can we do? Yeah. What can we do? And I, mean, I pray that the doctor will not send anybody away because they say that they're tired or something of the sort. You know, we see you guys as heroes, you know, like you guys have all the answers to our problems when we are not well. We try. So please don't turn anybody away. We, 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 we don't. We don't. When it comes to such... We had a few cases. Well, it depends on the facility, but... At my facility, I don't think we ever turn anybody away. I mean, we still would try our very best to, even at least with the color in it being full, we had the color in it, if it's full, we still manage with the benches, hoping that somebody mm -hmm. would, on the, the proper would be, get well enough to go home, and then we just do transfers so, in. Okay, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you know, we were told that centers would be, there would be cholera centers, yeah. uh, facilities dedicated solely for cholera. Just like what we're trying to do yeah. with Ebola. Do we have them now? At least where you're coming from? <laughs> yeah. We have, we have um, cent certain centers designated for, to take care of cholera. I mean, our place, we have one. Um, I think Kaneshi Public Clinic, too, they have one. Uh, La should have and, uh, a few other places. No, La, 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 La doesn't. La, La, they don't? No, but La doesn't. we are taking some. Well, these are a few of the places where we had... We had... Um, the, what I'll say, the infrastructure, the infrastructure for these, um, for the cholera units over time has been getting dilapidated. So we'd have to probably renovate them again if mm. we are preparing for, just in case, we have to get our, our, our cholera centers um, renovated again, just in case the pressure comes up again. That's what I can say. Maybe some of them are getting dilapidated. Okay. They're actually built for that, but over time, they're getting weak. All right. So. I want to say thank you, really. Thank you for, uh, for the thoughts that you've shared with us. Welcome. Uh, and I, I pray that we follow through so we can stick to the rules because we don't want to record any cases not in 2015. We don't want to go to the level that we went to last year. And, and uh, Dr. Moti has, has said that it's a shame, you know, like we should all bow our heads down in shame we don't want to go there again so thank you so much for your time really welcome yeah all right so my guest dr dennis Botte uh, with the rich hospital he's a senior medical officer there we still have a lot more here on the am show so stick and stay well belief in magic and witchcraft has been around since the beginning of time you may have heard stories of people falling from the skies into people's homes and rooftops how do these persons find their way to these places uh, they've been attributed to witchcrafts often we just hear people say and then we also say it and other people say it and then you know it stays like that so this morning on my banner I want to explore the issue of witchcrafts does it really exist how does one acquire it we've got uh, an interesting story that we will also be sharing with you but let me just quickly introduce to you my guest in studio Sheikh Ibrahim Ibn Sana is, not, is an Islamic scholar and also a graduate pharmacist good morning to you sir good morning madam and Doc, uh, Pastor Doc Roberts is with New Bread Missions and executive director of Ripples of Love good morning to you sir as well good morning so can I just ask you uh, because I surprised him with it. Let me surprise <laughs> you with it. Do you believe in witchcraft? Sure, well, I believe in witchcraft. Okay. What yeah. form does it come? Uh, witchcraft comes in many forms. It comes in a form of magic. You know, it comes in a form of sorcery. It, uh, so it has many forms. It comes in the form of... Uh, uh, um, what, what we may call people having dreams and seeing things happen to them in dreams. So there are many ways that witchcraft mm -hmm. comes by. Okay. Sheikh, oh, you, you, when I asked you, you were just smiling. <laughs> so maybe now you speak it. Do you exactly. believe in witchcraft? Yes, in Allah Rabban Rahim, I do. Um, witchcraft has been talked about in the scriptures right from creation, just like uh, Pastor said. And it, in the Quran groups it 
in two forms, but they are all in the end lumped up as one. One word that is used for witchcraft is called al ayn the eye, using the eye to affect. Mm. And then the Quran describes in another form as sihr. And these two, al ayn and sihr, sihr is regarded as sorcery. al ayn is witchcraft. They intermarry. And therefore, they combine. They come in the form of spiritual, metaphysical, as well as the physical. Mm. So witchcraft can be the physical, the metaphysical, and the physical. And they can be done when you see them being done physically by our hands mm. or through the realms of the spirit. And so witchcraft do exist. Okay. Yes. Is, this, is it a positive or negative thing, Pastor? Well, as far as scripture is concerned, witchcraft is negative. All forms? Yeah, all forms of witchcraft is either call Even it, magic? Yeah, of course. Call it black uh, uh, or white uh, witchcraft. You know, we have what we call wh white witchcraft. Either be black or white, they are all negative. Okay. Because the end result is negative. So the European or American witch is also it's negative? It's also negative. Before God, witchcraft is witchcraft. There is nothing called white or black. Witchcraft is weaker because they operate with the same spirit. Sheikh, often we've heard how we, the blacks, we use our witchcraft for negative things, but yet you see the Europeans, you know, the white people using it for positive things. You've heard it too, right? Yeah, I've heard it for a very long time. But you see, um, when you go to Quran chapter 2, verses 102 to 103, it tells us that witchcraft, magic, sorcery, grouped together as one started when the angels descended down to babylon and then was manifested much during the time of solomon we call the prophet solomon mm. but they never they operate using the genie the genie what we call uh, invisible spirits the genie when you google genie are invisible spirits that can take many other forms either animals or human form they can transfigure it into many shapes and then between them between they operate between them and then the human beings and so when this uh, interface is achieved they use it in so many forms but the cardinal point comes from satan because it is said that those genies are descendants and workers of satan mm. but they never initiate you until they tell you that well this is cursed by god and this is satanism but we are not to be blamed for the actions that you are going to take mm. it is in a form where other forms seek to mutate in science we have what we call mutation you mutate into something else that you are not so that you can be able to transcend into a realm using forces that you are not controlled mm. they control you that's why people are accused that being witches people are accused in africa as doing negative things or europe the spirits are from satan and they normally control you so you can be here and the spirits will do something negative and they say that you have done it okay yes so we have an interesting story to share yes. we want to share with all of you so let's take a walk uh, let's watch this incident that happened right here uh, in Adenta, which is a community here in the Greater Accra region. This is where the whole incident happened. You see this canopy right in front of this store is where the man fell. He fell right on, on top of uh, this yellow 
canopy and that was where he was caught uh, lying down there and people claimed that he was uh, a wizard or he is a wizard. Uh, pastors, I'm told, pastors came in here to pour some anointing oil on him and then he started saying things according to uh, those eyewitnesses. They were saying that he started saying... Uh, confessing certain things that those doing business here are under uh, his spell and so uh, they are unable to to make profits as expected <laughs> <laughs> and that's all, that's what I heard. But how do you feel, you yourself? I how, uh, and I, how, what, what, what does it make you feel? Like, like somebody uh, is claiming that he has put spell under you or you, he has put you under, uh, under a spell and your business is not flourishing. Is your business really... Uh, no, 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 no. My business is suffering seriously. They are not buying anything here. This is just a restaurant and they just uh, closed the restaurant. They are not buying anything here. So you believe that the man indeed... Yes, it's true. Um, as of me, I'm a DJ here. But I, it's a certain time. The business, everything is, you know, is going down, 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 down. Because we all, we don't even get it right. Because we don't know what is going on. We don't know what is happening. But as today, God help we catch the man. So we all, we know that it's true that something is happening. Right. Thank you very much. Well, you heard him. He's saying that they believe that the man is indeed a wizard and that now that he's caught, everything will be going on well with him. We are here at the Adenta police station where a report was uh, lodged as a man was found lying on top of a story building, an uncompleted story building, naked, and he was brought here at the police station. Um, they wanted to beat him. They wanted to beat him because they said once you, uh, a, a wizard is caught, they have to lynch him or, you know, to beat him up to death. And I said no. It is not allowed. So I had to speak to this man, and then he was able to uh, give a number out to me. So I called the number, and the person was like, that's the uh, elder brother. So he's coming, like, he will be there in some few minutes. So then the way the crowd was, people wanted to, you know, beat him. So I had to phone in. I have to call the police from Adenta. And God being so good, there was a police officer to around who, who pumped in and then he was able to control the crowd and then he brought the man to the police station. You're welcome to join us. Thank you. All right. um, can you tell us about your brother? What do you really know about this whole incident? Oh, my brother comes after me, the second born. Uh, for the past three and a half years, uh, he has been at our hometown, Jose. Uh, looking after our ailing sister. Unfortunately, the sister died last year. After burial, we found that it was not necessary for him to stay at the day. Uh, okay, so this is essentially the story. A man uh, was found on top of these stores in Adenta uh, one morning this week. Uh, apparently, he's a wizard, uh, and that was his brother, to, you know, talking to us as well. This incident was reported at the Adenta police station. But I, I want you to, you've seen, you've heard. Yeah. This is a man who was caught, you know, people in the neighborhood woke up to see him naked on top of these stores. And he confesses that, yes, he's got uh, witchcraft. Uh, how often do you come across such incidents, Pastor? Yeah, um, many a times you hear stories like this, you experience some of these things yourself. So this is real? It's real. It has happened. I, I tell you a story of my own. You know, I, I was lying on my bed one night, and then I felt, I was sleeping, and I felt an image standing beside my bed. That's not a dream. When I open my put on my bed light, 
there was this guy standing right in front of my bed. I mean, my room. Okay, so it happened. What was he saying? <laughs> Interesting. He was saying nothing. I, mean, I, I was fixed. I was shocked because uh, I was, and he was bare just say he was in his uh, bosa, uh, bosa shorts. And I was how, wondering how, did he... how, what he's doing. Somebody my... that you knew? Yeah, somebody I knew. You know, right standing. And you see, you can see that this is not the person. But the spirit is controlling that person. That's why I will add to what Sheikh said. That for us to understand witchcraft, it is important we understand the spirit behind it. Yeah. Like he said, like he said, every witchcraft, be it white or black, have, have their source from Satan. Yeah. I mean, when, when in uh, Revelation chapter, I think, 12, when Satan was sacked from heaven, when he landed on this earth with his courts, the angel with him at the time, they become demons. So every spirit that that's has witchcraft, or anyone who operates by witchcraft, operates by demonic spirit. This guy was standing right in front of my bed. When I switched on my bed light, he just turned like a robot. Like something is controlling him in, right in my eyes. And then he walked off. I didn't ask him anything. I was like, okay, so this is it. And strangely enough, about two days after, he came again. Sleeping and he came this time. I asked him, I, I mentioned by name. I said, guy, what are you doing here? He did not say anything. He just turned. And I was just watching him. Like somebody's using remote control to control him. And he walked away. He came the third time, and this time I confronted him. I said, the next time you step in this room, I will kill you. And that was the last time he came back. He came back. Shake, any experience? <laughs> Has anybody stood by your bed? <laughs> yes, I have uh, ever seen a person, uh, just like uh, Pastor is saying. It's just that these things, you don't say them. But there was a time I, was, I had prayed in the night, and I had slept. And then a man came, standing. I don't know how he entered the room, but he was standing. The eyes are like the eyes of the camera. When they come like that, you don't see their natural eye like that. This becomes like glass. And the man was wailing his eyes, and he was just looking at him, and I was also looking at him, fixed. He stood there for some time. The next moment, uh, I didn't see him again. But we experience it all the time. When God gives you the gift, you experience it all the time. But there are principles. The principle is that you see not, you hear not. And you say not. And you say not. So most of the time when you see spirits doing their own thing, you go about also doing your own thing. So long as you don't see them doing negative things they are going about. But they exist for you to know that they exist. So what pastor experienced was God's way of telling him these things ex exist and they are real. Oh, wow. The reason why the person came the third time, the person was coming first, second, third time, what the person was commissioned to come and do to him, by God's power over him, the spirit comes but is not able to execute the project he came to do. So when he confronted the spirit the third time, that's why he didn't come again. But yeah. he was coming to execute a spirit. And in the Quran, the prophet mentioned it to us in several times. So here's what we're going to do, because, yes. you know, we don't have time. I yes. have to wrap up like now. Wow. I know that the people watching also have experiences. Some yeah. want a little clarification. Exactly. So what do you say we do this? We continue on Friday. Sure. No problem. Okay. Sure. okay. So that's what we'll do. But I want to say thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you more so. experiences thank you to share. Thank you so much. Uh, so. I am, okay, so this is where I have to end the show. Uh, I've been on with Roland Walker. We're back again, God willing, tomorrow. Stay with us here on the Join News channel.